so the point is is that you can effectively train for skiing off snow. You can develop the body responses to similar input. And um, okay, so, will you show us that one one more time? Sure. And you explain it, explain through it again, John. Okay. <clears throat> how how she's just firing. Okay, so. Again, these are one of those exercises that the neurologic input is, is massive, so they call it proprioceptively, and the proprioceptors are all those parts of the musculature and tendon and, and joints that give information about where the human body is. And they are giving it, they call position sense, which I really like that term, position sense. And so this is neurologically dense, so she's getting a lot of feedback on the position of every joint in her body. Remember, if the, if the, if the joint goes to either full flexion or full extension, it shuts down. You don't get any sense. So if you rise up in skiing and your legs are straight, your body literally, your brain does not know where your feet are. It only knows where it is based on flexion and tension on the, at the joints. So that's why these, these are, are, so, are so helpful. And they're really appropriate. Someone that has good posture on the ball will have good posture on skis. Yeah, and you try and pause and hold right it there for a minute and then fall forward. So you try and get, when you get to full hip extension, this is the secret to slalom, which is really interesting. Um, there we go, because slalom, the, the, the um, axioms are really confined because there's so much work has to be done in such a short area and time frame. So axiom three, two and three are literally happening simultaneous. And there we go, and five, so. This is how you end up with your hips in front of your feet without rising. We're are you doing... supposed to keep the ball between your yeah. butt and your yeah. heels? It's, okay. Remember, skiing is yeah. about the hamstrings. Yeah. yeah, right. Right, so you, you you, that's the reason why that double, so you can see that, and you'll see when she does the knee work as well, that you're able to, again, remember axiom number three, doing the knee work? Well, you need to have flexion in the hip. Well, if I'm here, everybody's telling you to get kind of up and over your skis or get forward, and so you rise up, but of course, you never do get forward, your feet just pass you. But here, you can see her outside hip ends up in front of her outside foot, doesn't it? Right. And it's just, for, it's just for a millisecond, and then you're right back to neutral glide. So in slalom, the action of creating the edge angle, right, and getting a hip positive position are all done, a lot of it's from the hamstring, right, and the glutes, and you're doing it at the same time. But the quads are meant for, in the load phase, once you've established your base of support and your hip position, this powerful drop and driving action into the snow, right? And that's when the quad comes on. And it's just like sprinting. It comes on for a very short period of time. Most in, within the, the sprint cycle, the, again, stance gait, most of the, the gait phase is more hamstring oriented. And then it's glute quad power, boom, off, glide phase. And, and that same cycle exists in all sport. You can be coach, all right? Cool. Yes, she's got it. She's got a wide stance, ah, but she'll have it for a second. I'm not 40 anymore. 